Christopher Fjellner, just explain to me why should the EU be exempted from any kind of tariffs from the US? Fundamentally because the tariffs are unjust and illegal, uh, but I don't think only the EU should be exempted. I think these tariffs shouldn't be in place at all. Uh, just to explain there where you said illegal, uh, just, just to develop, what do you mean by that? Uh, the WTO framework is pretty tight and uh, the United States has used an exemption that was, was created in 1949 for, for situations of war and things like that. Uh, to claim national security to more or less close off its trade on steel and aluminium is to abuse the international rules on, on trade. Uh, this exemption was never intended to be used in this way and therefore the US is acting illegally. And what do you think then, what's your view on President Trump's decision to try and pursue this line and pursue this angle? What, what do you think it projects um, in terms of what he... First of all, it's utterly irresponsible for him because it's, it clearly runs the risk of starting a trade war. Something in me almost gives, gives me the feeling that's exactly what he wants though that he wants to create a mess in international trade and a trade war. Uh, but it's also, a, I think, an attempt from him to challenge the whole international rule-based trading system. Uh, and he wants to challenge the WTO. And he actually wants the European Union, Japan, Australia, all his trading partners to come to Washington under threats and intimidation to negotiate exemptions instead of applying the most favoured nation rule that, that, that should govern all trade in the world. So by doing these negotiations, I think we're kind of following his narrative, unfortunately. He's obviously spoken about uh, wanting to protect the American worker. And one of the things which has come out today is that um, perhaps he would be willing to consider exemption for the EU if they helped with fighting over capacities. Now, this has been interpreted as helping to fight, uh, particularly in terms of aluminium and steel, uh, with regards to China and Chinese dumping. Do you appreciate that sentiment at all? Do you think he's got some point there? He's just executing it in the wrong way? Uh, there is a huge problem of overcapacity in the steel sector and, alum and aluminium sector. That's a global problem. Uh, China has maybe the biggest part of that problem, but let's be honest, that problem is also a European problem. It's a UK problem as well, and definitely an American problem. And all these attempts through tariffs to kind of uh, shelter your own market will actually make that problem even bigger because that will hinder the structural change and maybe force the structural change to to happen in places where it shouldn't happen. The best way to actually address it is probably through the international negotiations that we already have undergoing with China and through letting markets work by closing down the factories that just doesn't happen to be competitive. Do you think that President Trump should be worried at the fact that EU has been at least vocally prepared to consider uh, retaliatory measures if these tariffs are going to be put in place? Uh, of course he should be worried by, about that. We all should be worried about that, uh, in a sense, because as we all know, tariffs hurt, they hurt ourselves more than they hurt anybody else. The biggest problem with these tariffs that President Trump introduced is, of course, the, the, the injury it creates to the US economy. I, I saw that the Congress did a calculation where it concluded that every job protected or created by these tariffs costs around 3.7 million dollars. Uh, it, it's just stupid economy. The problem is of course that our tariffs that we might do as a response to the, to the American tariffs will hurt the European economy as well. So therefore I think that this tit for tat is, is very worrisome. How, uh, you just mentioned they're you know, very worrisome. There's been a lot of news and a lot of headlines regarding this concept of a trade war breaking out, uh, obviously spearheaded by the US, but then through EU retaliatory measures. Do you think that's even likely? Do you think it's going to be something where the, there's been a lot of noise, but actually when it comes to something happening, it suddenly fizzles out? I am genuinely worried. First of all, because we have these tariffs on, on steel and aluminium from the US that, that will, will be introduced. Uh, I think uh, the Secretary General of, of the WTO framed it pretty well where he said an eye for an eye as a model in trade policy will leave the whole world blind and that's honestly where we are heading. Uh, if the US introduces these tariffs, which they clearly have said they will, and the EU then introduce countermeasures, then the US has already now announced that they will then introduce car tariffs on 25%. So, so we're heading head on towards a coalition which I think will lead to trade war if, if we don't get a grip of the situation. Now, 
Just on another uh, form of sanction, mm -hmm. particularly in the UK context, obviously there's the Prime Minister of the UK, Theresa May, stood up in the Commons and said it was highly likely that Russia was responsible for a, a nerve agent poisoning mm -hmm. in the UK. Uh, the implication there being that some kind of punishment or at least sanctions towards Russia, if absolutely proved, uh, will be very much considered by the UK government. Now, the EU, obviously, the uh, UK is part of the EU and would be needing the EU's help in terms of sanctions. Do you think that the EU would be prepared to cooperate with the UK in terms of further sanctions on Russia if the evidence is found to be irrefutably that there was a state involvement in the, in the poisoning? I hope so, uh, because I think uh, if, if, if there is anywhere is a question about uh, threat to national security, this is the kind of situations that one should be able to use trade policy to actually make a statement. Do you think it's going to be hard though, difficult I in terms of the politics? I think unfortunately it might be hard uh, because we already have sanctions to Russia uh, due to the, their interventions in Crim and the war that Russia is, is currently a part of in, in Ukraine. Uh, and secondly, the second reason is of course that, that there is a, a challenge of keeping the unity we have in the European Union right now on the sanctions we already have with Russia. I hope though that more and more people throughout Europe realize that Russia today is not an ordinary country and shouldn't be treated like an ordinary country. It constantly breaks all the rules that actually governs the European security order and, and by reacting together with the UK we're actually taking responsibility for keeping peace and freedom in Europe. Now one last thing I've got to ask you, as it's been constantly been going around the, the Brussels bubble, is what's happening with Martin Silmeier and the appointment uh, to uh, the most powerful, one of the most powerful jobs in the EU Civil Service, Secretary General of the Commission. Now, the criticism being that it's nepotism at its most obvious example. What's your view? I have a hard time judging whether it's nepotism or not, but I can definitely say it's wrong. <laughs> uh, the whole procedure is, is, is honestly scandalous and I think that if, if this is the way the European Union should deal with its highest officials in the European Union, it actually hurts our credibility when, by pointing it towards others. When you say scandalous, then, in what, in what way was it so, so scandalous, so, so troublesome? Uh, that, that, you, that you declare in a sitting meeting, if I would have been to a meeting of the Commission, as it's been reported at least, uh, and, and during that sitting meeting you're just being informed that you're going to add a point to the agenda to appoint the Deputy Secretary General, and then when you've done that, the second later the acting Deputy General informs that he's retiring so that the man that you just appointed then becomes Secretary General. That is something that it sounds like things we criticize Hungary or, or Turkey for and should not be uh, a decent thing we do, a normal thing we do with inside the European Union. And do you worry that in terms of the message it sends to other nations, particularly some with Eurosceptic aspects of the population in terms of you know, the European Union being a very shady and perhaps politically uh, unaccountable or at least murky world? I, that's not my primary worry though. My primary worry is the fact that we don't play by the rules that we set out and if we start to compromise them then we're on a slippery slope. Uh, of course that also hurts the credibility of the European Union everywhere in the world and inside Europe as well. But I think the, most, the only decent thing to do would be for the, the President of the Commission, for Jean-Claude Juncker, to actually admit the fact that this is, was dealt with in the wrong way. Let's redo it and do it the right way uh, and then see if it's Selmayr or anybody else that through a public appointment uh, and an open transparent procedure would be appointed to this position. Uh, this can't become a, a center moment for this commission uh, but if they don't address it seriously then of course this can keep on going for ages.